The third Democratic debate is over. We had Jamal Simmons on the ground in Houston, Texas. I got to go to a fellow bald guy first. What's up? <laughs> There's probably some meme of my like facial expression being like, oh, like that just happened. <laughs> I'm Sagar and Jetty filling in for Jamal Simmons, and this is why you should care. The Democratic Debate 3 has officially wrapped. It was the first time the top Democratic presidential candidates all shared the same stage. Much of the discussion tonight centered on policy with a few heated moments that were here and there. But in this Democratic horse race, we know Joe Biden is the man to beat. So how did he do last night? Some say he came out of the gate strong, but he lost steam as the debate carried on. A few of the 2020 candidates took the opportunity to make their case against Biden. Here's Jamal Simmons on the ground in Houston from the spin room. Well, I think we made the distinction. Um, you know, Joe voted for the war in Iraq, which turned out to be one of the great foreign policy disasters in the history of this country. Joe has voted for terrible trade agreements, NAFTA and PMTO with China, which cost us millions of good paying jobs. Joe voted for the bailout uh, of Wall Street. Joe voted for a very bad bankruptcy bill. I opposed all of those initiatives. And I think it's not only the voting record, I think it's my vision for the future. Uh, I am prepared to stand with the working class of this country and take on the greed and corruption of the corporate elite. This was a disagreement about the best way to do health care. Uh, the vice president said at the last debate that his plan did not leave out 10 million people. And then the fact checkers after the Detroit debate, they looked at the plan and his plan and they said, yes, your plan does leave out 10 million people. Um, on the debate stage tonight, he said that if you lose your job, that you would have to that you would automatically buy in to his plan. That's important because um, that's not the same as automatically getting enrolled into a plan. Under my approach, you would automatically get enrolled. That's a big distinction. While some could argue that the last night was pretty predictable, leave it to the only candidate who has never held political office to do something pretty unconventional. During the debate, entrepreneur Andrew Yang announced he intends to use $120,000 of campaign funds to give to 10 randomly selected families. It's part of a pilot program for his Freedom Dividend Plan, aka Universal Basic Income. Jamal Simmons caught up with Yang in the spin room and asked what many of us at home were wondering. Is this plan actually legal to be able to give $1,000 to 10 people? I know, of course it's legal. We have an army of lawyers who signed off on it. Uh, but you have to reflect for a moment that we live in a system where a billionaire can spend tens of millions of dollars buying his way on the debate stage and everyone thinks that's fine. And then we're literally giving money to Americans around the country to do whatever they like to improve their lives. Then people say, it's like, oh, is that legal? So, it's not buying so votes. It is, it is legal. Um, but it, if you think about it, it's kind of ridiculous that we've gotten to this point. It's not buying votes. Again, you know, people who get the freedom dividend are free to vote however they'd like. Some of them may be in states where, you know, where, frankly, like, I might not even pop up on the, the ballot for, like, months and months and months. Here are more highlights from the spin room. So, let me just give you some samples. You want to do some samples? Here's one. End lobbying as we know it. You know, you want to be a senator or cabinet secretary, good for you, but understand this. When you take on that kind of responsibility in our federal government, you never get to be a lobbyist. You never get to trade your Rolodex for what comes next. Or here's another one. Block the revolving door between Wall Street and Washington. This notion that you end up with someone who works on Wall Street, works on Wall Street, works on Wall Street, and then comes into the administration and writes the tax plans that, oh, then give away a bunch of money to Wall Street. No more of that. Those are the kinds of changes we need to make. Oh, I got one more. Ready? Everybody who runs for federal office has to put their tax returns online. Did we hear you on guns? And where you, where you, where are you on whether or not you'd confiscate automatic weapons? You know that, that weapons. the word confiscation is a word that Republicans use to try to scare uh, gun owners. Uh, we had a nation that in the 1980s said that we are no longer going to have machine guns. Uh, we don't have machine guns anymore. We did it successfully. If you look around at other countries uh, that realize that these assault weapons are weapons of war that belong in the theater of war, they found constructive ways to get them off of our streets. Let's stop the fear mongering. Let's make sure that 
we are a nation that does not allow weapons of war into our communities. Certainly, the way we're seeing right now, where they're being used in mass shootings uh, with, uh, with agonizing regularity. There's more post-debate reactions to come here on Hill TV. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos. And head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.